Um, homeless is kind of horrible because you have to move everywhere, pack all the stuff up. It's pre pretty hurting. It pretty hurts your arms a lot. And like when you move about, it it just agony and everything. So homeless is just like it's like how can I put it? Hold on. Same. Turn off my game. Homeless mm. is being like losing the football match or betting all your money They're on losing. just one doggy. And the doggy loses <laughs> the doggy <laughs> race. And you lost all your money. And then you're completely broke. You lose your home. You have all your stuff put in storage. You have to scavenge around for money. So you'd like to be sofa surfers, yeah? Yeah, yeah sofa surfers. It's a uh, figure of speech. Figure of speech. Because oh. you can't really surf on sofas because they sink. Figure of speech. <laughs> Being homeless doesn't always mean you live on the streets. For this homeless family, it means moving from one house to the next. Mum is collecting Shane and Carl from school to start the long journey home. What are you doing over there? Stay there. What are you doing going over to there? I don't care. Give me your hands. Single mum Billy Jo spends nearly three hours a day travelling from their flat to the school over six miles away. The travelling is a big part of their day. It's really hard because it takes us almost an hour and 35 minutes just to get there. And by the time we're there, we're already exhausted. So we don't function right and to do our work. So we have to have a big bowl of cereal to keep us going all day till lunchtime. Come on, By the time we get home, it's, it's already dark. And um, sometimes when Rosie's ill, Mum has to look after her. So me and Carl have to go to, us, go to school by ourselves and come back sometimes. It's kind of hard because it takes us ages and ages. Their small flat in South London is the fourth home they've had in just four months. This is called emergency accommodation. The local councillor has provided it after the family lost their own home. At the end of a tough day, Shane reveals what his friends at school think about his situation. None of them are really my friends because I do things differently. You're the only homeless boy at school. How do you know that? Because I've asked everybody, are you homeless? And I'm the only one on the survey that says I am homeless. How does that make you feel? Lonely. When I walk past them, as I go here back, I look, look behind me and I see them pointing at me. And then they start laughing. I'm trying to, trying to fit in and it's not working. Everybody except them, all my friends, hate me. Shane lives with his mum, brother and two sisters. This flat is so small, Shane is having to share a bed with his brother. Carl is 10 and downstairs is Ronnie, known as Ronnie Roo-Roos or Rocket Ronnie because she speeds a lot, she's so fast when she crawls because she tries to exit for the door. And Rosie is four, she goes to the same school as me. I've asked Shane to keep a video diary with a little help from Carl and Rosie. <laughs> it's been very hard for me today because it's kind of hard being homeless, every single, everybody saying, oh, you're homeless, you're homeless. I'm sick and tired. When the family lost their own home, all of their furniture and belongings were put into storage. They have to make do with what is in this flat, so bedtimes can be an obstacle course. 
Hello, this is my room. Would you like to come in? Um, that's my big cupboard, which I can't open really because it's full of clothes, and it's full of all bags. Um, I have a window that sometimes opens up by itself, and here is the cupboard when we moved in. As you can see, it's broken. The bed's broke, and they've put loads and loads of planks of wood under it. And as you can see, there's there's a broken bit of wood. I've put this there to stop it going under. When I got on the bed, before I put that under it, I sat on it and I almost went through it. It's quite hard to cope with. Oh, this mattress is heavy. That, that bit's a bit too dangerous because when I fell asleep, I whacked my knee off it and my knee got trapped in it. So my mum said, go sleep in Rosie's room. Shane and his family have only been here a couple of weeks and they have been told by the council they may have to move again. Um, but we're moving to Belvedere and I think it's going to be great because they promised it's going to be a house and it's going to give me some space to run around and play. They have moved into their new house. It's the fifth move in five months. Belvedere is right on the outskirts of London where they have no friends or family. They are nearer to their school, but with the disruption of moving house, they're running late for the bus. It's five past eight. Get ready, sort yourselves out, kids. OK. With two cereal bowls to share between the five of them, breakfast is chaotic. For four-year-old Rosie, it's a bit too much. I don't really want to get up, because every time we have to get dressed, when I'm tired, I can't go to sleep at school because I'm not allowed, so I want to stay home f forever. The school run is tiring for everybody. So far, Mum has been up since four in the morning and they still have hours of journey ahead of them. Love ya. Love. Being older, Carl goes to a different school to Shane and Rosie. Shane is still fitting in at his school, but being homeless has affected his behaviour and how many friends he has. He thinks he might not have as many friends as he should. Don't get yourself into trouble, Shane. So who are your friends? Um, these are the friends that actually care about me. There's Reese B, there's Reese P, um, Ben, Lee, Victor, Iffy, um, Abraham, Sophie, Samantha, and Vivian. You've got loads of friends. That's only 10 out of 40. The family have only been in their new house for a week, and they are discovering it is far from perfect. This is our front room. It's divided into two parts. The front front room and the front back room. The only thing good about this is that it's big and there ain't no doors, but it's bad because the door frames are concrete, not wood. This is the kitchen where my mum is making a delicious shepherd's pie. And you've got the, what we call the leaky washing machine. You've got the fridge where all the mice ran out from. You've got, you've got the... Careful, careful, because the oven is on the Oven, oven, that, there's nothing wrong about the oven. This is my sitting room here. This is my bouncy bed. Why are you doing this is as hard as Ah, ah! This is Shane's ugly, pathetic drawers which you be shocked what you could find in there. You can even find a bit of pizza if you are lucky. I should take you through to the bathroom and show you the leaky tap. Mm, that looks nice. Yeah, keep your fingers out. Yum, yums. This is the leaky tap. It's always um, been leaky and 
it has no washer, so the water keeps on pouring through there, and the water builds up under the floorboard that's risen it all. So every time it keeps on leaking, it goes under here and comes out the floorboard and comes round there and comes out through the kitchen. And poor, poor mum has to go and mop it. The boys capture the reality of their situation on their video camera. If you can see, this is a hot god. My sister Ronnie had this in her, her hand. It was very devastating. How does it feel to live in a house full of mice and cockroaches and mould? It feels very uncomfortable. If, if, all, all it feels like is we're coming home to a house with mould growing off the walls, off the, off like the cracks, and it, and with like, with um, pests. And the world is just living it. It feels uncomfortable. It don't feel like a proper home. Cockroaches can spread diseases in their poop. So we call the cockroach exterminators. Crikey! What? It's a cockroach! Wanna see them? There it is! Cockroaches are dangerous. And they poop. I'm gonna have to take drastic measures by squishing it. Yeah, run, little creature. Yeah, you little cockroach. Sue the builders. Sue the government. Sue everybody. Even though they are homeless, Shane and Carl still have to do as they are told at home, as Mum makes her rules clear. We've been having arguments. So we're in lockdown, that's why we're in lockdown, because we have too many arguments and speak to Mum. The way you two are with each other, you're supposed to be brothers. And you're fighting each other, and there's enough people in this world that want to fight each other. When's the last time we argued? Uh, about ten minutes ago. How? We sometimes like each other, then other times we hate each other. It's called disagreeing. Oh, yeah, it? well, we slap yes. each other around the face. Oh, the, yeah, that, well, that sounds like a disagreement. <laughs> a disagreement no, in one. That's not no, funny. No, first one's a slap each other. We slap each other. Which one's the hardest wins? <laughs> what have you got? Nothing. I'm bankrupt. I'm not bankrupt. I got all my money taken away. Because I did have two £10 notes and I had a £1 coin in there. Where's it gone? Mum took it, cos it's on hold. Because um, I'm on lockdown, cos I don't speak to my mum the right way I should. She says it ain't what I say, it's the tone of my voice. How can She's you been watch? watching Alvin and the Chipmunks. Who are you shouting All at? Week. Who are you shouting at? <laughs> How can you play DS and watch telly? I'm not watching the telly. Well, let her have the DVD she wants to watch then. <laughs> When they start appreciating what they've got and yeah. everything that they have done for them. We have! Lockdown means no, no computers, except from this boring blue game that I got from Poundland called the Brick Game. And lockdown means I can't have no treats, no staying up late. And that's what um, Mum says, if I mouth to my mum, and that's what... Mum says that's what should every pa parent should do to their child if they're being, like, mouthy. Just being spoke to like I'm a bit of dirt. I don't it, speak to like you're and a bit listen, of dirt. To, listen to the way you're talking to me she now. She says it doesn't matter what you say, it's the tone of it's, your voice. Exactly. It's not what you say, it's the way you say it. Your life is so harsh, well, Mummy going to show you harsh. It's hard life, isn't it? <laughs> no. Nah. Yeah, it's hard life. You just sound like, just like my mum when she said that. Except she said you want a number for childline. <laughs>
Despite his bad behaviour towards his mum, Shane does not want to make life any harder for her than it already is. I've got a happy life here, but I don't want to be moved away from my mum because I love her. Because I remember when I was little, my mum told me about this. I said I wanted to marry my mum. But mum kept on saying I can't. Well, if I could, I would. Why are everybody looking at me for? <laughs> It's coming up to Christmas, and for Shane, Carl and Rosie, it's a chance to forget about being homeless and write a Christmas wish list for Santa. I'm going to get Cinderella and the Cinderella bread and a sleeping room bread. A game, um, it's called Pokemon Rangers. And the first thing I want for Christmas is a mute button and a mute control for Ronnie. More toys like action figures. Slovene, the Doctor Who thing. A Bentem Omnitrix watch. And a Tinkerbell breast. A bike. And a sleeping room bed. But with less than a week to Christmas, Mum hasn't got anything to spend as she is waiting for her benefits money to arrive. It is stressful because you don't know whether you're going to be able to get everything and. If, is, the, is it going to clear and it's just like... And the kids are like, I want this and I want that. And it's, we'll have to wait and see. All of the family's furniture is in storage from when they first moved. They have been told they cannot collect any of it. This includes their Christmas tree. But Mum has a good idea and the boys capture it on the video camera. We're not allowed to get our Christmas tree out of storage, so now Santa won't leave any presents, which really upset us all. My sister Rosie started crying, but then my mum came up with a great idea. We're going to paint a Christmas tree on our front room wall, and we're going to film our, us making it. Christmas tree seems to be coming on great, kids. That's it. Uh, look what you're doing because you're... Yeah, Rosie. Well, there's no need for that. Look, Mum is putting tinsel on our Christmas tree. Shane and Rosie are helping. I'm a Christmas tree. Shane wants to be a Christmas tree. Could be the fairy. OK. Ronnie Rose <laughs> has destroyed the Christmas tree. <laughs> I think we're going to have to make it again. Look at that white tinsel. It will bring out the real shine in the Christmas tree. This is the Christmas tree that we made. A bit crowdy, but who cares? At least it's a Christmas tree. The tree did the job. They might not have got everything on their list, but there were presents on Christmas Day. It was fun, because Bunny Room has got loads of toys. <laughs> And we got loads of toys. I got a new DS game, so did Carl. But for everyone to get some toys, Mum had to make some sacrifices. So, and do you think Mum had a good Christmas? Yeah, but she didn't get nothing. She didn't get nothing. What Mum really wanted for Christmas was a permanent home for the family. But with another temporary move on the horizon, their dream is still some way off. I'm doing fine with it. But Mum's really ain't coping because she's been crying, as, you, as you've heard. What three things would you like Mummy to have? I would like her to have a new perfect house. Um, a happy life. Make her get all the money in the world and make it split be with me. And a new, new dad. And a new... And a new kitchen floor.
Overnight, half a foot of snow has fallen, which is good news for Shane, Carl and Rosie. Yeah, it was snowing and snowing and snowing. It snowed yesterday so hard that there's no school today or yesterday. Probably there's going to be no school tomorrow. Yesterday was snowing and it was so cool because like it, cause it hadn't snowed in months. And there were no buses, there was no trains, there was no school. And I could hear the kids, if you listen very quietly, going... And me and him were having a snowball fight. And the voice was like, oh, help! I'm getting, I'm getting a snowball fight! It was radical. Thanks to the snow, their schools are shut once again, which means another day of fun in the park. There was no buses. And we waited almost an hour for a bus, so we went home and then we saw no buses all day. So we came here um, to this park. Lots of families have taken to the park with their sledges. For Shane, Carl and Rosie, sleds are a luxury they cannot afford. Instead, they find a private spot and hit the slopes with bin bags. Slippery, because you can speed along it. Mm. I'm going. Yeah. They are the only ones in the park using bin bags for sleds, but this hasn't stopped the fun. <laughs> what about all those kids who've got um, posh sleds? What do you think of that? Peasants. Do you feel a bit left out because you've got a bin bag? No. They should be using bin bags. But they're peasants with plastic things. Blech. Look at them. No day in the snow could pass without a snowball fight between brothers. But it's not all smiles when Carl gets a direct hit. You hit him in the face. What did? A snowball. Do you think you should go and apologise? Okay. What does Shane do for me? The latest thing he done is make me a sandwich. What do I do for him? Make him a sandwich, make him cereal, I sometimes run his bath, I let him win. I do everything for the the gang may have no friends here, but they have each other, and this will get them through. Carl's generous, and Rosie's just a shrop. But Rosie does like the rough and tumble of life with two older brothers. <laughs> they sometimes beat me up and sometimes chuck me down the suit. They sometimes put me in a nappy. And they even ask that why they're stinky brothers. Because they chuck you down the bin chute and put you in a nappy? Yes, that way they stink. And how big is your nose just grown? Really, really, really long. Mum has given each of them one pound to spend on sweets in the shop. They're going to have to work hard to make the money stretch. How much is this? 85 85 I can still so get 15p left. So I can get a bounty, bounty, bounty. 
car. Excuse me, how much is that? That's one thirty, man. You can't get one. No fair. With so much on offer, it's hard to keep spending to a one pound limit. How much is this? Um, fifteen p. You get no change though. I give him the pound. The family make the best of their situation, whatever the conditions. But already another move is right around the corner. How many moves has that been for you in the last year? Four. Five? Five. I can't remember them all. I know we moved from Abbey Wood, no, Irith, to Abbey Wood. Um, and then we go into Thamesmead. And then we go into Deckford, and then we go into Belvedere. So how many has that been? Um, five. In what period of time? Six months. That's a lot of moving in six months. And you think you might be having another move? It might be one more emergency accommodation, or it might be a permanent. But no matter how much they hope for a permanent home, nothing is certain. Do you worry that you might be homeless when you're older? No, I have my life all worked out. I dumped my girlfriend at the age of 16. Um, I get a job. I buy a dog. A puppy dog, though. Uh, I live in a house. Cruising away. And nobody can visit. Do you think you might be homeless when you grow up? No. Why not? Because I'm going to have a great job and I'm going to not be homeless. I'm going to have... I'm going to have a house and all I need.